Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. USAA. Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. We are so pleased to have you for this amazing radio program of a Dickens Christmas Carol. We are the Julips, and we will be performing just a short pre-show for you to get us all in the Christmas spirit. So uh, we welcome you to listen along and have a wonderful evening tonight. Let's go. 
free to sing along. I mean, <laughs> we know you know these. <laughs> This will be our last pre-show song, and then we will let the actors take the stage. Thank you all again for coming. It's going to be a great show.
Holly Julitz. We'll see you after the show. Good evening, everyone. Just a brief uh, announcement here. We're uh, still waiting for a few people prepaid uh, tickets to come in, so we'll probably get started about five minutes after 7. There's still plenty of opportunity to get upstairs and get your favorite beer and wine, popcorn, and other kinds of concession goodies downstairs. Tonight's show is fantastic. I totally appreciate you being here. I just wanted to let you know what was happening. We'll have something for you very soon. If there's any questions, comments, or opposing viewpoints, please let me know, and I'll uh, work my way around the audience as quickly as I can. Thank you for being here. Happy holidays. As a cactus, you're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. You're a monster, Mr. Grinch. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. You've got garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? <laughs> the Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he took his dark max, and he took some black thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he whistled for Max
Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. While the merry bells keep ringing, happy holiday. The holiday season and Santa Claus is coming round. The Christmas snow is white on the ground. When old Santa gets into town, he'll be coming down the chimney down. He'll be coming down the chimney down. It's the holiday season and Santa Claus has got a toy. For every good girl and good little boy, Santa's a great big bundle of joy. When he's coming down the chimney down, when he's coming down the chimney down, he'll have a big fat pack upon his back, and lots of goodies for you and for me. So leave a peppermint stick for old Saint Nick hanging on the Christmas tree. It's the holiday season. The holiday season. So a hoop de do and dickery dock. I don't forget to hang up your sock. 'Cause just exactly at twelve o'clock, he'll be coming down the chimney down. He'll be coming down the chimney down. He'll have a big fat pack upon his back, yeah. and lots of goodies for you and for me. So leave a peppermint stick for old Saint Nick. Hanging on the Christmas tree. It's the holiday season. The holiday season. So a hoop de do and dickery dock. I don't forget to hang up your sock 'cause just exactly at twelve o'clock he'll be coming down the chimney, coming down the chimney, coming down the chimney down. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. It's the most wonderful time of the year, with the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. It's the Oops! If I could have your attention just a moment, I have some happy news for you, and that is that it appears that our performance tonight is sold out. Now, the bad news is that there are still people out there that want to get in and get a seat, and they'd like to sit together. So I wonder if I could ask everyone if you can scrunch up, if you could move over into a seat that's empty next to you, um, try to free up some seats so people can sit together. That would be great, and we would very much appreciate it. And you would be our Christmas heroes for all time. We're going to get started in just a second, so go ahead. You won't disturb anything if you want to get up and just move over a seat or two.、Uh, make some extra seats available for everyone. Scary ghost stories and tales of the glory. Oh, I'm just told there's two seats in the front. If someone wants to、uh, to grab them, it's closer to the glory of the performance. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time. Yes, the most wonderful time. Oh, the most wonderful time of the year. 
chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir. And folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe. Help to make the season bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a live broadcast of Reimagined Radio. We are seriously broadcasting tonight, live and direct, without benefit of commercial interruption, from the historic Kiggins Theater in beautiful downtown Vancouver, Washington, USA. Our broadcast tonight is um, provided through the courtesy of Gerald Gall and his American Senior Radio Network. The last time we did this, we had listeners from around the world, so we extended Vancouver beyond our boundaries, and no longer are we in the shadow of Portland. Thank you so much for being here tonight, folks. It's a cold night. It's a dark night. It's almost the shortest day of the year and the longest night, so the fact that you have come here to support what we're doing makes all of us on the stage and in front of the stage and all of us associated with tonight's performance feel especially warm and proud and full of the holiday spirit. Just a few thank yous before we get started. Uh, First of all, I've already thanked uh, Gerald Gall. I'd also like to thank Dan Wyatt, the owner and director. Dan has been very generous in providing us the use of the theater tonight, and I think it's really unusual that people would come to a 1936 historic movie theater to watch a radio program. (laughs) I'd also like to thank some new partners uh, in the Reimagined Radio Project, the Metropolitan Performing Arts Group under the direction of uh, Barbara Richardson. Uh, All these folks are with us tonight. I started the Reimagined Radio Project five years ago. This is our final performance of the fifth season. So five years ago, doesn't seem like but yesterday. Time has gone really great, and we appreciate the support. But it's always been a dream of mine that we could be able to provide performances that were locally acted, locally voiced, locally produced, that would involve local musicians, local artists. It would be local performance for our community. And tonight I'm very happy to say that that dream has been realized, and I appreciate the fact that you are here to um, experience it with us. Tonight's performances, as you know, are a Christmas carol uh, made famous by um, Charles Dickens. 1843, he first published the novella. It was serialized before that. It really never has been out of print since, and it's been interpreted in a number of different media. But we especially like the radio adaptation of 24 December 1939 by Orson Welles and the Campbell Playhouse. Uh, This was the one where um, John Barrymore played the part of Scrooge. I have to say that um, the performance of Scrooge tonight by our our very own uh, Vancouver-based Steve Becker is better than that. (laughs) So um, here we go. Thank you for waiting live and direct now again without benefit of commercial interruption and for your holiday benefit, reimagined radio production of a radio Christmas carol. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another performance by the Reimagined Radio Project. Tonight, we return to the golden age of radio and invite you to see and hear a radio program 
as it is reimagined before your eyes and ears. Tonight's performance is a radio adaption of the Charles Dickens holiday classic tale, A Christmas Carol. The story is often credited with bringing joy and festivities back to the seasonal holidays after years of sober Puritan suppression of merriment and pageantry. The message of tonight's performance, that humanity far outweighs riches, is most important as we contemplate the changes and uncertainties ahead of us as a culture, a community, a country. We hope you enjoy our performance, and we wish you a very happy and safe holidays. Once upon a Christmas Eve on a mean and shabby street in London stood the office of Scrooge and Marley. Marley was seven years dead, but Scrooge never bothered to paint over Marley's name on the weathered sign above the front door. A waste of time, paint, and money. Scrooge and Marley were partners for many years, but Ebenezer Scrooge was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner he was. A frosty rhyme remained permanently upon his head, his eyebrows, and on his wiry chin. His coldness iced his office in the dog days, and it didn't thaw out one degree at Christmas. A fact attested by Bob Cratchit, Scrooge's overworked and shivering clerk. Hey, you there, Bob Cratchit, come here. What are you doing there? Uh, why, uh, <clears throat> well, you see, my stove's gone out, Mr. Scrooge. I'm putting a bit more coal in the fire. See, it's so cold in here, sir. You put that coal back into the scuttle. A fire. A fire, indeed. I can tell you, if you use coal at that rate, you and I will soon be parting company, Bob Cratchit. You understand that? There's many a young fellow who would like your situation, you know. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, my fingers were getting stiff with the cold. Well, you put on your mittens. Yeah, there's someone at the door. Go see who it is. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Oh, good afternoon. Is this the firm of Scrooge and Marley? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I should like to see the head of the firm, if I may. Oh, uh, very good, sir. Yeah, what is it? A uh, gentleman to see you, Mr. Scrooge. What? Uh, have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or, or Mr. Marley? Marley's been dead these seven years tonight. I'm uh, Scrooge. Ah, okay. Uh, well, now, uh, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of year, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should help with food, uh, clothing, and, and shelter for those less fortunate. Uh, you may not believe it, sir, but many in our community are now in want of common necessities. Yeah, bah. And, and many more will soon be afflicted if the government continues its reckless course. Are there no shelters? Well, uh, there are some, sir, but never enough. Especially at this time of year when safety and sanctuary are most needed. Are there no share houses, no food banks? Well, yes, sir, there are, but they alone cannot meet the community needs. Yeah, and what about the local government? What are they doing? Well, well sir, we have elected a female governor or mayor, uh, our first ever. She is very much hands-on in the operational style, but there are decades of head-in-the-sand resistance to change that must be overcome. Business will carry us forward by creating jobs and lowering the deficit. What about the director of that downtown association? Why does he not fix the problem? Uh, he cannot do it alone, sir. Uh, it takes a city. Everyone working together. At this time of year... Some additional provisions for the poor and the destitute must be made. Yeah, bah. Um, <clears throat> well, a few of us are endeavoring to help, you see. And, uh, well, what should I put you down for? Nothing! Oh, uh, oh, I see. Uh, you wish to be anonymous then, sir. I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself and do not wish to help make idle people merry. 
They'll help to support the establishments that take care of the poor. They cost enough in taxes. Let those who are badly off go there. Uh, many can't go there, sir. And many would rather die. Many will die. Well, then my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only your word for that which you say is so. It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Uh, well, so be it then. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, sir. I, I quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Good afternoon. Cratchit, show this gentleman out. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this way, sir, please. Sir, I couldn't help but overhearing. Uh, I should like to contribute tubbins. Crump, Cratchit! Uh, yes, sir. It, it isn't much, but it's... It's all I can afford. Uh, but there are others in a worse situation than I. You are a generous fellow. I wish I might say the same of your employer. Cratchit! Uh, it, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Merry Christmas. Cratchit! Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, yes, sir. Close the door. Oh, yes, sir. Twenty-four, thirty-one, one, uh, carry three, uh, a new scarlet tippet for Tiny Tim, a comb for Martha, uh, thirty-three, three, and carry a three, a hair ribbon for Belinda, hmm. four, seven, twelve, fifteen... Cratchit! Uh, 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 yes, sir? Uh, sir, yes, sir? It is late, and the other businesses will be closing like fools. We may as well close up the office as well. Uh, yes, sir. It is getting dark. Uh, hard to see the figures. I, uh, I suppose you'll want the entire day tomorrow. If it's quite convenient, sir. It is not convenient, and it's not fair either. But I suppose I can't do anything about it, eh? Well, if I was to stop half a crown of your wages, you'd think yourself very ill-used, I'll be bound. <laughs> well, sir, I don't know. Well, <laughs> yes, but don't think me ill-used when I pay you a day's wages for no work. <clears throat> it's only once a year, sir. To once a year. Once a year, indeed. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Why not even the county gives a paid holiday to its employees? But I suppose there's no good talking about it. You may have the whole day. But see to it you're here all the earlier the next morning. You understand? Uh, oh, I will, sir. Uh, good night, sir. And Merry Christmas. Yeah, bah! Oh, my. Uh, Mr. Scrooge, it's your nephew, Mr. Fred. Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Fred. And a Merry Christmas to you as well, Bob. And the missus. Uh, and to Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fred. Uh, same to you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Bob. Merry Christmas! Oh, God save you, Uncle. Yeah, bah, humbug. Christmas a humbug? Uncle, now, I'm sure you don't mean that. I mean just that, exactly that. Merry Christmas, Christmas. What right do you have to be merry? What reason have you? You're poor enough. Well, what right do you have to be dismal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough. Bah! Now, Uncle, don't be cross. Well, what else can I say when I live in such a world of fools? If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly through his heart. Uncle! Ah, now, nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep Christmas, Uncle. Well, leave me alone, then. What do you want? A Christmas gift, no doubt. I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Much good may Christmas do you. Humbug! There are many things from which I derive good by which I have not profited materially, I dare say, Uncle. For example, I have no slogan hats for sale, but I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it! <laughs> I wonder you don't go into Congress. you talking of nonsense. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. 
Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, too. Bah, bah humbug. Christmas. Nonsense. Twaddle. Flummery. Fake news. The office of Scrooge and Marley was closed. Bob Cratchit, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no great coat, went down a slide on Corn Hill twenty times in honor of Christmas Eve, and then ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could to play with his family at Blind Man's Bluff. Scrooge, on the other hand, took a melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern. After spending the rest of the evening with his banker's book, he went to his dismal house. Scrooge walked through his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room, bedroom, storage room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa, nobody under the bed, Nobody in the closet. Scrooge locked himself in. He double locked himself in. He took off his cravat, put on his dressing gown and slippers and his nightcap, and sat down before the small fire, allowing himself the pleasure of its meager warmth. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, because a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat you. You, you, you can't be a ghost. You may be an undigested bit of beef or a <laughs> lot of mustard or a crumb of cheese or a fragment of undone potato. Yes, there, there's more gravy than grave about you, whatever you are. Ebenezer! I, I, I do believe in you. You are a ghost, Jacob. Thank you. But why? Why do you walk the earth, Jacob? Why have you come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk among his fellow men and travel far and wide to witness what cannot, what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. But tell me, Jacob, what, what is that chain you wear around you? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad amongst his fellow men. Card box, keys, padlocks, ledgers. I wear, I wear the chain I forged in life, made it link by link and yard by yard by my own free will. Its pattern seems strange to you, Ebenezer? Oh, oh Jacob, please, Jacob, speak comfort to me. Well... Yours was as heavy and as long as this. Seven years ago, you have labored on it ever since, Ebenezer. Comfort, I have none to give. I cannot rest, I cannot stay, I cannot linger. Weary journeys lie before me. Oh, Jacob, Jacob. Don't take on so now, Jacob. I, I will listen to you speak, but please don't be so flowery. Seven years... Go on, go on, Jacob. You were always such a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you, but go on, go on. Ebenezer, How shall I escape it, Jacob? How shall I escape? I am here to warn you that you have yet a chance of hope of escaping my fate. Do you hear that? Yes, yes, I'll do anything. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the only chance, the only hope, Jacob? Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. Can't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? Ebenezer, for your own sake, remember what has passed between us. Remember when the bell tolls one. One, look for the first spirit. Molly! Jacob, Molly! awoke. He was lying on his bed, and then suddenly the curtains on his bed were drawn aside, and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them, as close to it as you are to the person sitting at your elbow. It was a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child as like an old man. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white as with was age, but yet the face had not a wrinkle in it, and the tenderness bloom was on the skin. The arms were long and muscular, the hands the same, as if its hold were of uncommon strength. Ebenezer Scrooge! Who, who is that? Ebenezer Scrooge, I have come for you. You are the spirit, sir, whose coming was foretold me. I am that spirit. Who? What are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, Ebenezer. Your past. But what? What, what do you want of me? What, what brings you here to haunt me? Your welfare, Ebenezer Scrooge. Rise and walk with me. Walk in these slippers and dressing gown and nightcap? 
Come, we will leave by the window. Oh, oh, no, no, no. That is all very well for spirits, but I'm a mortal and I will fall down. I will keep you safe. Come, follow me. Look just below us, Ebenezer Scrooge. Do you know this place? Why, yes, I, I know it, spirit. I was a boy here. See, there's my old school with the cupola and the, and the bell hanging in it. Come, let us go closer. Look through the window into that cold, barren room. What do you see, Ebenezer Scrooge? I see a boy. A solitary child, neglected by his family, alone. Yes, yes, I see. I know that boy. I was that boy. So lonely when the schoolmaster told me that Christmas was not for everyone, that self-pity was degrading. A very wise man, don't you agree, Ebenezer? Ah, of course I don't agree, spirit. Christmas is important for every child that age. There was a young waif singing outside my office yesterday, and I should have given him something. Uh, oh, well, it's too late. Is it? Come, Ebenezer, let us see another Christmas. Now we are in the city, and that lonely boy is older. Do you know this warehouse, Ebenezer? No, it, no, it, this is the counting house where I apprenticed. It's my old master. Bless his heart, old Fezziwig. My master, alive again, and hosting one of his Christmas parties. Oh, how wonderful. Pick your partners, everyone. Oh, listen to him. Thread the needle and back to your places. <laughs> oh, look, there's Mrs. Fezziwig herself, looking younger than any of them. And at the tables, all loaded with roasts and cider, mince pie and beer. Oh, what a jolly time we used to have. That carefree young man with the light heart and the gay smile. Do you recognize him? Yes, yes, yes. Merciful heaven. How happy I was then. A small matter for old Fezziwig to make those silly folks so full of joy. <laughs> small matter, small indeed. Isn't it? He has spent only a few pounds of your mortal money. Is that so much that he deserves praise? <laughs> it's not that spirit. Old Fezziwig has the power to make us happy or unhappy, to, to make our service light or heavy. His power lies in words and looks and, and in things so tiny that it's impossible to count them up. The happiness he gives is quiet and as great a cost as, well... What is the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, spirit. Something, I think. No, no, no. Speak. Well, it's only just that I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit. That's all. My time grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. Where now? Come. This is our last visit to your past, Ebenezer, here in this little room with a fair young girl by your side. Do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? Oh, no, 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 spare me this. You're older now, a man in the prime of life. Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, the eager, restly eyes of a miser. No, no, please. She knows it, too. That girl by her side, there are tears in her eyes. It matters little to you, very little. I know that. No. Have I changed toward you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then? Better to be poor? Better at least to be happy. You're changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser? Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words? No, never. In what, then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So I release you from your promise. Belle. Oh, at first it may cause you pain to lose me. A very brief pain. But soon it will dim, 
like a half-remembered dream, an unprofitable dream. And you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you have chosen, Ebenezer. Oh, that's enough. Show me no more. Take me home. These were the shadows of the things that have been. That they are what they are, do not blame me. No, no more. No more, spirit. Spirit, I cannot bear any more. Leave me. Haunt me no more. Take me back. Take me back. awakened suddenly and sat bolt upright in his own bed. He remembered the words of Marley's ghost and wondered from which direction the second specter would appear. As he waited, he became aware gradually of a great blaze of ruddy light which seems to shine upon him from the adjoining room. He got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. It was his own sitting room, no doubt about that, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceilings were so hung with living green that it looked like a perfect grove, from every part of which bright, gleaming berries glistened with such a mighty blaze went roaring up the chimney as had never been known in Scrooge's time. Heaped up on the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys, geese, game, poultry, great joints of meat, suckling pigs, long wreaths of sausages, mince pie, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red-hot chestnuts, and seething bowls of punch, which made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. In easy state upon this scouch there sat a jolly giant, Glorious to see who bore a glorying torch, a shape not unlike Plenty's horn, and held it up high, high up to shed its light upon Scrooge as he came peeping round the door. Come in! 
in, come in, Ebenezer Scrooge, and know me better, man. Who? Who? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You've never seen the likes of me before. You're, you're different than the other spirit. You're, you're tall, almost like a giant, and, and that great torch you carry. Its light pours into the homes of the rich and poor alike. Spirit, take me where you will. Last time I went against my will and learned a lesson which is working now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Take my hand, Ebenezer Scrooge. Take my hand! Where have you brought me, spirit? A humble dwelling on a humble street. It is humble enough. Yet there is happiness there. Who? Who are these people? Who's that woman? And the children? These are the family of your clerk, Bob Pratchett. His wife, dressed in twice-turned gown, but brave in ribbons, laying the table for their Christmas dinner. And there, assisting her, is her daughter, Belinda. And that young man with the fork in the stuffing, <laughs> that's Master Peter Cratchit. And those two little Cratchits. Listen, Scrooge. His mother, Martha. Oh, yes, Martha. Martha. Why, bless you? your heart alive, Martha, my Hello. dear. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Mother. Merry Christmas. How late you are, my dear. Oh, we had a deal of work to finish up last night, and we had to clear away this morning. Well, never mind. So long as you're here now. Sit you down before the fire and have a warm Lord bless you. Uh, where's Father? He's been to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along directly. Uh, how is Tiny Tim, Mother? Any better at all? Sometimes I think he is, and sometimes I think... Oh, dear God, if anything should happen to Tiny Tim. Mother, you mustn't think of such a thing. Oh, here they are. Here they are. (laughs) There's Tiny Tim. Merry Christmas, everybody. Martha, welcome, my dear. Merry Christmas, Father. And Tim. Merry Christmas, Martha. Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father, I'm so glad to be home. Oh, and we're so glad to have you, Martha. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? Oh, as good as gold and better. I like church, Mother. Oh, they sing the nicest songs, and I hope people saw me there. Saw you there? And why, Tim? Well, don't you see? Because I'm lame. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who it was that made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, bless you, my son. Yes, children, we're all ready. Come, come, take your places now, and Bob, wait your turn. There's plenty. Stuffing and dressing and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, you take care of Tiny Tim. Yes, Mother. You see that he eats plenty. He must get tall and well. Now, sit down, sit down, everyone. And now, my dears, with such a dinner, a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all, and God bless us. Amen. God bless us, everyone. And now, to Mr. Scrooge. I give you a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. Who pays you all of 15 shillings a week? I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on. And I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. Oh, now, my dear, the children, Christmas Day. Well, it should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious Stingy, unfeeling man is Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Bob. Nobody knows better than you, poor fellow. Oh, my dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink to his health for your sake and for the days, not for his. Long life to him, a merry Christmas and a happy new year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say God bless him too, Mother. And God bless us, everyone.
tears in your eyes, Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, Cratchit never told me the boy was lame. He has worn that brace and carried that little crutch for as long as he can remember. They are not a handsome family, these Cratchits. They are not well-dressed. Their shoes are far from being waterproof. Their clothes are scanty and have known, very likely, the insides of the pawnbrokers. But they are happy, grateful, pleased with one another, and content with the time. But my time in this globe globe ends tonight, Ebenezer. I must away! Wait, wait, wait! Tell me this before you leave. Yes? Spirit, tell me, will Tiny Tim live? I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner, and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. Oh, oh, no, no, kind spirit. Say he will be spared. Say he will live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, Ebenezer, the child will die. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. Will it not be better if he dies? As you once said, it will decrease the surplus population. (laughs) Farewell, Ebenezer. The ghost of Christmas yet to come awaits you! Scrooge found himself once more in his bed, in his dressing gown with his nightcap upon his head. He remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting up his eyes, beheld the ghost of Christmas future. A solemn phantom, shrouded in black, draped and hooded, coming towards him slowly and silently, like a mist upon the ground. I know you. You are the ghost of Christmas future. You'll show me the shadows of things that have not yet happened, but will happen in the time before us. Answer me, spirit. I fear you more than any specter I have seen, yet I know your purpose. It is to do me good. And as I hope to live a, a, another man, a better life from what I was, lead on. Lead on. The night is waning fast and time is precious. Spirit, why? Why have you brought me here again? Here to Bob Cratchit's house. But it's not the same. What? Why is it so quiet, so, so very quiet here? Mother, mother, please. My son, my little son, Tiny Tim, I loved him so. Oh, Mother dear, you mustn't. It is almost time for Father to be home. Don't let him see you crying. Yes, yes, Martha. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to, and yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed with Tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was so light to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble. Bob! Good evening, my dear. You're late, Bob. Yes, I'm sorry, my dear. I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet and green a place it is. You'll see it often, I promised him. Yes, I, I promised Tiny Tim we'd walk there on a Sunday. Father, dear. It's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son. My little son. I need him. I loved him so. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel spirit. Spirit, can't you give me one ray of hope that I can change all that? That Tiny Tim may live? Where are you taking me now? Here on a common street? Spirit, what is there for me to learn here? Who are these men? Uh, I don't know much about it either way. I only know that he is dead. Well, when did he die? Last night, I believe. Well, it's likely going to be a very cheap funeral, for upon my life, I don't know anybody Uh, going to it. (laughs) Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. Uh, You know, I don't mind going if uh, lunch is provided. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, come to think of it, I think I was his best friend. What? Well, we used to nod at each other when we'd pass in the street. (laughs) Spirit, help me. 
Who is this man that died? Is, is there no one to mourn this poor creature? No one to follow him to his grave? Perhaps they'll give him a green grave at least, like poor tiny Tim, perhaps. Oh, now I see it. There's the writing on the stone. The name on the gravestone is Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge, oh no, no spirit, no, 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 hear me. I am not the man I was. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Tell me that I can change these dreadful shadows you've shown me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll, I'll try to keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future, and I'll not shut out the lessons that they teach. Tell me, tell me, Spirit, oh, tell me. Tell me that I can sponge away the name, the writing on that stone. Spirit, I beg you. Spirit, I beg you. woke a changed man. Why, why, what is this? Here's my own bedpost. Oh, I am home. I am in my own bed, in my own room. And the sun, the sun is shining. It's clear. It's bright. No fog. What a beautiful day. Oh, glorious, glorious. Hey, boy. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. Wait, what day is today? What's that, sir? What, what day is it, my fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day. Ha, ha, ha! Christmas Day! Well, I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night, all in one night. Heaven be praised. How's that, sir? Lad, listen, my boy. You know that poulterer on the next street? I should say I do. Ha, <laughs> ha! An intelligent lad. A remarkable boy. Now tell me, do you know if they sold that prize goose that was hanging in the window? The one as big as me? <laughs> what a delightful boy. It is a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, my young buck. It's hanging there now, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. Now go, go down there, will you? And tell them to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street. And mind you, they'll, they're not to know who paid for it. Go along. Hurry, hurry, my lad. Wait, wait, wait. Here, here. Here's a half a crown for your trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Merry Christmas, sir. Ha, ha, ha. And a Merry Christmas to you, my boy. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, a Merry Christmas to everyone. A Happy New Year to all the world. Oh, let's see. I must get dressed. Yes, I have much to do. It is going to be a very busy day. Yes, it will be a very, very busy day. And it was... A very busy day. Ebenezer Scrooge was out observing Christmas in the merriest of ways. Ah. Scrooge talked with everyone he met. My dear sir, how do you do? <laughs> I, I beg you, me pardon. I, I... Well, you, sir, aren't you the gentleman who came to my office in regard to the charity? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Well, well, a Merry Christmas to you. Uh, yes, sir. And allow me to ask your pardon, sir, and will you have the goodness to accept... Uh, I prefer to, prefer to whisper this. Oh. Oh, but, Lord, 
Lord, bless me, my dear little Mr. Scrooge. Are you serious? Well, if you please. Now, not a farthing less. <laughs> a great many back payments are included here, I assure you. <laughs> Will you do me that favor? Well, my dear sir, I, I, I don't know what to say to such generosity. Uh, now, now, don't say anything, please. Come and see me, will you? Will you come and see me? I will. I will indeed, sir. <laughs> thank you. I'm much obliged to you. I thank you 50 times. Bless you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. As he walked about, Scrooge looked so delighted that people could not resist talking to him. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, oh Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, and he even stopped to pat children on the head. Oh, hee, hee, hee. Merry Christmas, my dear. And he gave shillings to beggars. God bless you, Mr. Scrooge. And Scrooge even went calling on his nephew. And his nephew's wife kissed him. Oh, Scrooge had a wonderful time and a wonderful Christmas. Next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late, that was the thing he had set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Cratchit. A quarter past. Still no Cratchit. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see Cratchit come in. When Cratchit did arrive, Scrooge called out. Hello, you, Cratchit. Uh, yes, sir. Step this way, Cratchit, if you please. Cratchit, what do you mean by coming in at this time of day? Oh, I am very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. Yes, you are. You are. I think you are. Oh, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday. I tell you what, my friend. I'm not to stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm about to raise your salary. Uh, Mr. Scrooge, are you quite yourself, sir? Oh, no! Thank heaven for that. I am not quite myself. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, my good fellow. A merrier Christmas than I've given you in many a year. I shall raise your salary, and we will see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family. <laughs> uh, we'll discuss it this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. To Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as a good friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh and little heeded them. His own heart laughed. That was quite enough for him. He had no further interaction with spirits and lived happily ever after. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed that knowledge. May that be truly said of us all. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone! of the Charles Dickens holiday classic, A Christmas Carol. Thank you for joining us and helping us to spread a bit of holiday cheer. We plan future performances here at the Kickens Theater. Please watch our websites and social media for dates and times. This is your announcer saying thank you and best wishes for the holidays. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to Monday Matinee right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Tuesday Terrors for Horror, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Thursday Thrillers for Action, Adventure, Mystery, and Crime Drama, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases for the week, from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network, listening and imagining together.